It's hurtful to see your neighbors and your children in your own family. I had a family member kill his own son to save his life, else his son will give him. So when we start at what we can do at home, it's fine. But as a community, as a city, and as a state, we must show everyone we're doing some on every level because all these billions that a community conversation just a few hours ago a city in crisis leaders coming together for 60 today, minutes right here on this tv to talk crime and violence as well as solutions it's a topic that we've covered extensively specifically in the first two months of 2020 where there's already been 33 murders in just 55 days. Yeah, there were 19 murders in that same time frame last year. Dan Klein spoke to a few participants, uh, participants after it was over. Dan, they tell you they believe this really could make a difference. Yeah, for them it was refreshing and even inspiring to hear others who share the same passion about making the city safer. But now the harder work begins to take that passion and turn it into action that changes lives. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. For a this city in crisis. Eleven leaders in their community on a single stage, asking and answering the hard questions about Indianapolis and crime. First, the causes. So many of the uh, most recent murders seem to be emotionally driven. A large number of interpersonal conflicts now and is unpredictable. Poverty is a huge contributor. Lack of opportunities. With often a connection to social media, an exchange on social media. Where disrespect can now be broadcast to hundreds or thousands at once, and guns are often readily available. So it's time for a new set of solutions, different from what may have even worked in the past, often with a common theme too giving teens and adults a sense of hope. We need alternatives to suspensions and expulsion so you're not creating a pipeline. We need employers who are willing to come along and give these young people an opportunity, second chance opportunities. We also have to have our police officers accountable. Different ideas, different perspectives, even clashing at points, but leading to a similar reaction when it's all done. I felt the passion, I felt the concern. Even from Rick's perspective, we may not see eye to eye. Tonight was phenomenal. In part because while these 11 may be leaders in their community, there is a growing realization that too often they've been operating independently and not aware of each other's efforts, which is why... I think it's a good starting point, as long as we keep the, the pedal to the metal. I think this will lead to direct action. I think it, it will move the, move the needle. I, I think it will, and if it don't, I'm going to push to make sure that it does. I was born and raised right here in Indianapolis. Which is why Wish TV owner Dewan McCoy says it's important to set aside commercials to devote time on an important topic that affects the entire community. I think it's our responsibility to help continue to advocate and to help continue the conversation and hopefully get to solutions. The time finishing with the key question. What do you need? Volunteers, more volunteers. Data and partnerships. Community involvement. The minimal wage has to be increased to $15 per hour. A hope that this conversation is the beginning of the end of a city in crisis. Though that answer is not just hours or days away, but weeks, months, even years. The proof will be in the outcomes, right? I always go back to the outcomes. I think we have more in common than what we think and that we need to build on that commonality and roll our sleeves up and get this work done. Hmm. Well, obviously, I, you did a guy, you guys did a great job Thank you. in moderating this, but what would be your takeaways? Obviously, you were there. Yeah. What was your takeaways from what you learned? Yeah, I think that my biggest takeaway was I had this assumption that uh, most of these people were already meeting in, in a different facility, in a different way. I, d I didn't know. And what we heard tonight was this was so good to get us all together yeah. and hear from each other. And it made me realize, oh, this is something we need to keep doing. Right. For me, it was basically how big of a problem this is and widespread it is and how, uh, the legs that it has and that there's not one simple answer. We're definitely not going to solve it just here tonight. It's, it's ongoing. It's cyclical. It's a big problem. Yeah. And I, I, we were talking about this. That Facebook thing to me was so interesting that, you know, years ago, if you diss somebody, one person heard it. Now you do it on social, social media, media. Yep. and thousands can see it and hear it at once. And that's part of that just a new generation. Yes, generation absolutely.